podcast listeners. This is What Scares Us, a podcast brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library, where four friends discuss horror movies that make us wish we'd have 12 more cups of coffee and didn't nod off to sleep, left to dream sweet nightmares, and fear the boogeyman. I'm Amanda, and I'm joined by three other staff members of the library. I'm Christopher. My name's Matt. And I'm Allison. Today, we are discussing the 1994 film, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, written and directed by Wes Craven. I chose it for today's episode because I actually had not seen it before, and I really wanted to watch it. Plus, we have not really done like slasher or or any franchise, like a big meaty franchise, so I wanted to do it for those reasons. And also, why not begin here with the very first film character, that actually scared the crap out of me Aww. as a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, so this movie is part of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. There's nine total if you include the 2010 remake of the original. And the one we're talking about today, uh, 10 years after writer and director Wes Craven bought his brought his personal nightmares to the movie screen as Freddy Krueger in A Nightmare on Elm Street, the horrifying child killer returns, stepping out of his celluloid world to haunt the life of the actress who first defeated him on film. Will Heather Langenkamp portray Nancy in a new Nightmare movie and really end Freddy? So that's the movie we're talking about today. Um, Here's a few fun facts before I hear about you all's relationship to this movie so far. Or the franchise. This movie has a million fun facts. There's a million tidbits and Easter eggs, all kinds of fun things. Um, So as as we, as I've said, the movie stars Heather Langenkamp as a fictionalized version of herself. Her young son is portrayed by Miko Hughes, who played our favorite little baby Gage in Pet (laughs) Cemetery. He's such a good creepy kid. He was also in Kindergarten Cop, Apollo 13, Spawn, and a bunch of TV shows. Full House. I I was just saying I'm from Full House. (laughs) I deleted a couple things from the list because it was really long. Sure. Um, Robert England, he portrays himself as well as Freddie. Um, Wes Cra- or Wes Craven portrays himself. Tracy Mittendorf plays the nanny, and we know her from Scream, which came shortly after this. Um, there's a bunch of other actors who are in the franchise who pop up in the movie. Um, Heather's real life husband was offered the role of her husband in the film, but he declined. Uh, this one, Freddie is portrayed as darker and less comical than later Nightmare films, which was also preferred by Wes. Um, after the movie was released, it became the poorest performing film in the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. <laughs> um, and it just happened to open on the same day as a little movie called Pulp Fiction. Unbelievable. Did, so, did which you, I did, saw it in the movie theater the week and Pulp Fiction came out twice. I have never seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, did um, you see what else was in theaters at this point? No. I forget that 1990, 1994 was an insane year for movies because if depending on when you went. So this opened in October. Mm-hmm. You could have seen, at the same time, you could have seen The Lion King, you could have seen Pulp Fiction, you could have seen Forrest Gump, you could have seen Dumb and Dumber, you could have seen True Lies, you could have seen Shawshank Redemption, Speed, Natural Born Killers, The Professional. I think Schindler's List was even still in theaters at one point during its run. Like, it's of course it didn't do well. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was against everything great that came out that year. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, the, but Pulp Fiction being, like, the other thing that opened, that... That kind of seals it for you, unfortunately. Yeah. So, Matt, tell us how. Tell us about your relationship with uh, so Freddy Krueger. When you picked this, I assumed that I had seen it because I I did make an, a concerted effort somewhat recently to watch all of these in 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 order. Um, I realized about ten minutes, and I definitely hadn't seen this one because I kind of petered out at. Um, Five was five the <laughs> dream child. Yep. Yeah, um, like the the boy the diminishing returns of these movies are it, it's unfortunate because I think like you Amanda when I was a kid and they even addressed there's even a fucking line in this movie about mm-hmm. it I knew who Freddy Krueger was he was terrifying to me just in concept and I think the first one is I think the first one's good um, it hasn't aged super well. But it's, you know, of of the, like, if you consider the franchises to be like a, a trinity, you have Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. The Nightmare franchise is pretty easily third place for me, I think. Um, even though it, it does really cool and ambitious stuff. And this movie is no exception. Um, 
but yeah, I hadn't seen it. I had huh. seen one scene from it, uh, like just the <clears throat> the scene in the hospital with Julie. So I was immediately taken with That's the, a good one. with the premise. Um, I didn't realize that it was meta. I don't even think meta was a term <laughs> at that point. Um, yeah, I I so I had not seen it, and like without saying too much, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Yay. I I like I had a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think in a lot of ways it's like I know there are a lot of nightmare fans that would say otherwise, but this is like one of the more successful ones for me in terms of it it works and like there are some kind of good scares in it, even though it is not a scary movie to mm-hmm. me. Um, yeah, yeah. I I there's a, I think there's a lot to like in it, and there is a lot to talk about. <laughs> Well, we're going to get into it later on. (laughs) But I don't remember when I first saw Nightmare on Elm Street, but it was so scary and really terrified me. And then a couple of years ago, I went back to the Ford Wyoming Drive-In to see Nightmare on Elm Street, and it kind of wrecked it for me. (laughs) Uh, You know, the sound, the picture, that... It, yeah, so it was kind of a wrecked experience. But then after watching this, I went back to the original and thought, oh, this is a good movie. So I do want to rewatch the first one again. I don't have a lot of interest in seeing Dream Child and all the various permutations <laughs> that that uh, Robert Englund is in. And for this one, I had never seen this either. I was okay. really happy to see it. Um, I had a lot of fun watching it. I really kind of felt like I was back in high school because it oddly looks like an 80s movie. Yeah, it does. So 80s. The hair, Mm -hmm. the filming, the home decor, everything. (laughs) So, Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. Cool. Well, well, well. (laughs) We have reached a movie where only I had seen it before. Is that real? Uh, That is correct. Wow. Um, Yeah, I love this movie. Um, I told Amanda that as soon as she mentioned it, I texted her that day. And um, she mentioned she was surprised. But my secret is all the movies I like were available for free on Comcast On Demand from 2006 (laughs) to 2010. So that's definitely where I saw this first. Um, I knew who Freddy was as a kid, but I was two when this movie came out so it was really like kind of before my time and he was already like a joke basically like Uh nobody was really afraid of him anymore including me um yeah so i actually went uh a little overboard with this and watched all of the freddy movies because i had only seen this one the first one and freddy versus jason oh before So I watched all of them, and I stick with, like, one, three, and this one are the only ones that exist to me. That sounds right. That's I think that's exactly right. Although I did weirdly enjoy two, because who doesn't love, like, a gay nightmare on Elm Street movie? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love this movie. I think it's super good. I love the premise. I love the storyline. I think that, like, Freddy infiltrating the real world and, like, haunting the actors that brought him to life is like so cool and this is the only freddy movie that i find him like at all menacing in Mm -hmm. although i still don't really find this movie scary but yeah love this movie i feel like the freddy krueger that was in the first the original nightmare on elm street i think he's still the scariest to me like the dark version that's in this freddy we'll talk about it but he is different Mm -hmm. it's something I don't know. But again, I'm watching it as, you know, 40, almost 40 years later. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. In the f- He has his moments in the first one, but, like, I think about those, like, long, stretchy marionette arms. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm. <laughs> No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look how long these get. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's the scary thing. I feel like one of my... <laughs> Maybe my nephew had a doll where his... Like, a Stretch Armstrong doll where the... A Freddy Krueger doll? I feel like that oh. existed. I don't... It could Maybe even dreaming about that. Be good could merch. Um, cool. Well, I'm excited that like three of us hadn't seen it before. That's so wild. I can't believe I'm yeah. the one who's seen this before. Yeah. I'd find that a little surprising. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like I was like a 19 when this movie came out, I would have been like or when the original nightmare came out, I would have been like eight. 
And like I, this was like the mid '80s. We got everything from the video store. We were not censored with stuff in my house, unless it was a really bad like, gro- like you know something gross, yeah. like adult versus murder, like murder and like blood and guts, and, like we could watch whatever. Um, and so we would have, of course, like a little sleepover. My birthday was in the summer, so we'd have like sleepovers, and we always would bring, you know, Hellraiser or Friday Thirteenth or Freddy Krueger. Um, and so those movies were just on. I couldn't tell you. So now as an adult watching them, I couldn't tell you which ones I watched in the in the 80s. I probably did not watch any in the 90s. Like when I was in high school and stuff, we, I didn't watch like the campy cheesy horror. So for me, these are cheesy. These are silly and cheesy. Um, even though I do like the like Friday the 13th, the original, this original. I liked Nightmare 1. I rewatched it again a little while ago and I hadn't seen it in a long time and I I still think it, I it's a good movie. I don't think it's scary. It works. It's I think it's really it's a good movie. I can see like that movie coming out in 84. That's a cool movie, you yeah. know, to be see on the big screen to be introduced to this new concept. And also if you think about like this almost seems more real than something like crawling out of the shadows because this is literally inside your mind. Like this could happen. Like this is the boogeyman coming to life. And for some reason, something through the fear in me as a kid of like the boogeyman's coming to get you. I don't know what bedtime stories I was listening to via who knows what absent parent. Like <laughs> <laughs> the boogeyman was a thing. So for him, and I, like I just had that visual of him. I was so afraid of him. Like. I remember like running past the big picture window in the living room. We had to walk down the hallway really quickly or otherwise, you know, Freddie's coming in. And I really wasn't, I wasn't a scared child. I wasn't, I didn't like all these other movies we were watching for some reason, something about Freddie Krueger just got me. Huh. I don't know. Maybe it's cause his face, his face was burned up or f- I didn't like fire either. I was afraid of fire as a kid. Still am actually. That's probably good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one thing in the, that the first movie has is all the kids have a secret and they've got to deal with this on their own because no adults will ever believe them. Mm -hmm. But then it also has the scene where one of the moms is telling, probably Heather's mom is telling Heather what really happened. So you get that whole nasty origin story, Mm -hmm. which is great. And the origin story in this one, you know, Greek god, master of the underworld. It's a little, yeah, it's a little much. You started to lose me. Now I'm, I feel like I'm watching Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you want to be really confused, watch all those middle movies. Okay. They don't make a oh, lot of fucking god. sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I've seen, I, I've seen one several times. Um, I've, I've seen Dream Warriors. I actually really like that one. I only like the ones with, you know, Nancy and yeah. West, West Craven, the West Craven and Wild Ones apparently. Yeah. Um, so one and three, and I did watch half of two. I didn't have enough time to finish it. I do want to watch, I, I was liking two. I liked how they were like, it was different characters. Nancy wasn't there, but they were in the same house. Mm-hmm. And so I was curious to see where it was going to go. So I do want to watch number two. Also, if you have not watched a lot of this franchise and it is, if it is important to you to be surprised and delighted of how new Nightmare is to you, you should probably tune out and go watch, you know, five to nine of these movies and then come back and listen. <laughs> or just one um, and this yeah. one. That's yeah. all you really but, need. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. This was a fun one. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, it went by really fast. So yeah, are you guys ready? Yes. yes. All right, let's, so. let's, let's, let's take that sleeping pill and head on into dreamland. And here we go. <laughs> so this movie opens on a shot of what looks like an animatronic version of Freddy Krueger's glove being made. It cuts away to actress Heather Langenkamp, who is holding a young boy, and it's all on a movie set. After the cut, while exploring the set, the hand comes to life on its own and attacks multiple crew members. Cut to Heather waking up at home, screaming during an earthquake, as what we had just all seen was a nightmare she was having. Her husband Chase has blood on his finger, though, similar to what was in Heather's nightmare. Dun, dun, dun. (laughs) Heather has been getting harassing phone calls from someone. After a while, she heads off for a TV interview. It's the 10th anniversary of the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Uh, While they're on the TV set, Robert England comes out as himself. and He's dressed as Freddy Krueger. Cute stuff happens. Afterwards, Heather heads in the limo to New Line Cinema for a meeting with producer Bob Shea, plays himself. And he says that Wes Craven wants to do another Nightmare movie and that her husband has been making the new hand for it. Heather says that Wes must be having nightmares again, and she declines the offer to play Nancy one last time. Heather heads on home. She gets there. Her son is having a nightmare. He wakes up screaming, and he says, never sleep again. 
and his stuffed little T-Rex animal is shredded. So that's kind of our first dive into being reintroduced to to Heather and Freddie and her family. Well, right off the bat, I had a hard time believing that Chase and Heather were parents. <laughs> <laughs> Chase is more like the kind of weird boyfriend. They both look like they're in high school. <laughs> And uh, he's so annoying, isn't he? His, his, <laughs> so he has a bunch of lines where his intonation is so off. He says, picture, I guess. It fell. No big deal. <laughs> and it's just over and over. I, I can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. I was glad. I think he was one of the first characters. He dies very he's, early. Yeah. He's one of few people to truly die in this movie. Yeah, thankfully. One of two, I think. Yeah. Because uh, the rest of them are just nightmares. <laughs> right. But, you know, to Heather's credit, she's not all that broken up when he's gone. <laughs> no. It's no. actually kind of amazing it's how, weird. how stoic she is about the <laughs> yeah. fact that he got, like, his dick cut off by Freddie yes. and then slashed and then a car accident. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. But she didn't believe it. But yeah, her method of mourning is very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go straight to the morgue and see it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I this. love the morgue scene. Oh my god. Man, we'll get there. There's no rules morgue that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. It's too yeah. good. Um, I love how it opens with. I love a little creepy kid in their jammies, and I love. I was watching it for a few minutes. And I was like, Why do I know that creepy kid? What's it? I'm like? Oh, that's freaking Gage. Mm -hmm. He's so good. Just give me a little. Oh, Again, a little Jamie's coming down the stairs like he's Carol or Carolyn from um, Poltergeist. Oh, yeah, freaking love it. He's a he's a he's a good child actor, and he works really well in horror stuff. Um, I was actually like, I was kind of relieved that it was that it was him because I don't know a bad child actor can totally fuck mm -hmm. up a movie, but but I mean, there's a reason they kept using him, probably mm -hmm. because he was part of this like. Yeah. casting thing but like but he's he's really great in this he had um, some good lines and also like he had really good expressions yeah yeah and when he's when he's freaking out after mm -hmm. having a nightmare he, he, he sells it pretty well um i love everything that happens in this opening the the thing with the mm -hmm. hand is super cool it looks mm -hmm. really cool and in Did most they said it had scenes. like the skin of a doberman or the hair of a doberman but in there doberman tendons I yeah think is what they said which is <laughs> gross and then there was there was some other animal part that was a part of it lauren yeah. heard it from the next room and was like ew <laughs> so i thought that was so cool <laughs> and again like i was trying not to like i knew it was going to be meta um and i knew that heather was her playing a fictionalized version of herself, but I I was immediately sucked in at the beginning with the hand, and then slowly you figure out that like every other scene is like a nightmare. But it, it was kind of cool to see. I was just waiting to see how are they going to do the next part. How are I was just waiting as like you know watching to see what the filmmakers put on the screen for me to see. Like how would they piece it together? A big yeah, a big thing to this movie's favor is that I didn't really know where it was going to go mm -hmm, at any yeah. point. With so it. And usually with these movies, I mean, actually, wait a minute. I'm not going to say that. The Night Around Elf Street movies are so absurd that you never know where the fuck they're going. Yes. But this one, <laughs> this one, like, I I truly had no idea. And I was kind of, a, I was along for the ride the whole way. There was. Well, because there was a story. There was yeah. like, you know, she was herself. So and a weird one at that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and like, you had to see like these actual Hollywood executives try to act, including Wes yeah. Craven. And none yeah. of them are particularly yeah. good. <laughs> but that kind of. You kind of like it was that about interesting. It? Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that about it. I love that so much. Yeah. If they would have had other people playing them or something, I just love that it was like them. And like when the actor who plays um, Nancy's dad, I'm like, oh, oh Don, Don Saxon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I got one of my favorite. Yeah. 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 So it was it was neat to see the little, and then even just seeing like some of the the repeated lines or scenes mm -hmm. and visuals, those were all like, I was just eating those little Easter eggs up with a little spoon. Yeah. yeah. Isn't the first mm -hmm. scene kind of a uh, tribute to the first movie I with the remember. hand? I think so. Yeah. I believe so. And it, like there, I, there's a bunch that, that, um, that I didn't quite catch because the first one is not super fresh in my mind. Um, there's, there's like little things all over the place yeah. in this. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's like a lot for Nightmare fans. Yeah, but. and there's a bunch of stuff that I'm sure I didn't even pick up on. But yeah. I did watch rewatch one recently, which was in my favor. Otherwise, some of this would not have got me. Um, I did like how there's that TV that's like not plugged in, but randomly keeps putting on the first Nightmare movie. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and you've got like Nancy and Tina, and I love that. And the kid just randomly has it, is like has that on. Yeah. 
I like that. I love the hammy version of the theme that plays at the talk show. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? I think it even plays at the end of the movie again. It's really bad. Like, <laughs> um, like it sounds like shit, but, uh, but I kind of love it. And Robert England really hamming it up is mm-hmm. great. Um, he only says bitch once in this movie, yeah. though. And that's usually like his big thing, Freddie, saying, calling everybody bitch. <laughs> I was laughing so hard at that because it reminds me of me the year after COVID, just like re entering society. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, that was it was cool. But you can also sense that um with Heather playing herself, you can kind of you can sense that she's still trapped in that world, like with the way her life is, how she has this like stalker keeps calling her and bugging her. Um Apparently that was true to life. Yeah. And yeah. Like they borrowed I did that read from about her that. Life, which is fucked up. Yeah. So I think it's it's I think it's cool that her real life husband did not portray him. Because mm-hmm. you think about like how sometimes like in movies, like things come to like happen in I don't know. Yeah. In real life. Well, and viewers weirdly feel like because they've seen you that they actually know you. So yes. they'll talk to them as though they're the character. Yeah. You know. You that girl from yeah. that movie with right. that guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. The You're famous. <laughs> oh. Wow. I, the first thing I, I like my first note is this liminal driver is no good <laughs> because he very clearly is not good. Yeah. Well, he's got that, a little skip when he walks around the car. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to put, got to put his little cap on. <laughs> Calls her to say that we're going to be late. And she yells out the door with the phone still off the hook that she's coming out instead <laughs> of just saying it into the phone. You know? But Yeah. Yeah. I like all this. There's so many shots of like the phone ringing and answering the phone that kind of had like scream vibes mm-hmm. um, or it like it threw back to like the first one and all these giant like I love all the car phones with the, they're the giant <laughs> 90s phones. Yeah. <laughs> and and like there's a this is jumping ahead, but I remember laughing at the size of the cordless phones that that. She and Robert England are using when yeah. he's painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or even uh, on the movie set, they had like that little case because they have the whole case, it'd take it out of the suitcase, plug it in. <sighs> yeah. Oh, 90s. Good stuff. <laughs> my, one of my friends had those, like it would have been like, probably 1994. It was her parents' car and her, she had one in the car. And I remember thinking, whoa. And it was wow. like a giant suitcase. <laughs> 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 um, in addition to watching all the movies, I also watched the four-hour-long documentary. Oh. I had time off. I don't ordinarily yeah. have this much time to watch <laughs> stuff. But um, uh, the guy who plays the husband, Chase, he was talking about how he felt so out of place the whole time because um, uh, Heather's actual husband, Michael, didn't want to be in the movie. And so they hired the guy to play Chase. But he said he looked like the dorkiest, like, special effects guy ever because everybody else looks, like, blue collar. He says, like, they haven't slept in, like, four weeks or something. And he's just, like, this, like, really, like, preppy, like, white guy. And his little cut to the chase shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the oh, I coffee that. cup. That's cute. Love says, it. Cut to the chase. Cut to the chase. <laughs> also, yeah. Robert Inkland, the guy seems so nice. I, mm-hmm. Apparently he is. Like I, I hear that he's like he's kind of what you want him to be if you meet him. Like he's not like aloof or anything. I think I think he's like pretty receptive to to fans. I'm sure he gets a lot of them. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he was signing autographs for little kids in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get over that he that he was paint Painting. that he's that he's an artist yeah. and he's covered in paint, but it's not anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> So I thought it was a pretty telling moment when he's on the talk show and he comes out and all the fans are there in the audience and all they want is Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. And I think that's the natural progression of a lot of these franchises. You know, Jamie Lee Curtis is a huge star, but no one is clamoring Mm -hmm. for Jamie Lee Curtis to be on stage. The hero is really the villain Mm -hmm. in every single franchise that develops. You know, it's Scream, it's Freddy, it's Jason, it's the other guy. Who am I thinking of? Michael Myers? Michael. Yeah. You know, (laughs) right. The other guy. Right. (laughs) The other guy. (laughs) You know, and it's kind of a weird inversion that you're kind of, you're excited when they come on stage, you clap, Mm -hmm. and it's, you know. It's a weird perversion of our psyche to, like, be a, you're you're fanning you're fanning over this like right this child molester, child molester. <laughs> yeah. right. who was I mean, murdered yeah you yeah know, it is kind of an odd 
Yeah. There was I read a similar article earlier where um Heather Langenkamp was talking a little bit about that where like if you picture this series, like you need Nancy and you need a really, really good actress to portray that character and to bring that to life. Um, cause you could also dive deep into like the lore of like the final girl and what that is. And one of the things they also mentioned or that she was talking about was you need to have all these other like weaker females die in order to have one person who's going to like be the final one. But I do really, really, and that, I think that's another reason why I do was excited to revisit this was I think Nancy's such a great final girl. Mm -hmm. And I think Heather did such an amazing job. Like even like now, 10 years later, I think because Nancy was 15. I don't know how old the actress was, but Nancy was or Nancy was supposed to be 15 in the original movie. Mm -hmm. So if you picture her like being just oh, I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. When she filmed this movie, she was a mm -hmm. young parent. She yeah. like just had a kid. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. That's trippy. It's wild. That's yeah, I can't imagine. The other thing that I didn't realize until I watched the documentary is like New Line Cinema. Yeah, of course. I've seen that in the front of like a bazillion movies. But Elf. I what? kept thinking I kept thinking Elf was gonna come on. Really? Uh-huh. Oh. Huh. Um but actually New Line Cinema basically exists because of the first mm -hmm. yep. Freddy or the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Because they had they were mostly a distribution company. Oh really? And so they had gotten like John Waters' Pink Flamingos and, like, something else. Mm. And they needed, like, a cheap movie that would make them a bunch of money. And it just happened to work out. <laughs> yeah. But wow. it's interesting because, like, when I saw this in high school, of course, like, it, there's all these executives and blah, blah, blah. But, like, they're probably still pretty new on the scene. You know what I mean? If this is 10 years after the original movie mm -hmm. came out, like, they've not really been in those positions that long. And a yeah. lot of the outside, um, like when you see the outside of like the building that they're working in, it's like actually New Line Cinema because mm -hmm. they couldn't afford mm -hmm. like sets. <laughs> and some of the people like in the office are people who work there and Bob Shea plays himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you know. yeah. It's just, I, I love the, the meta. I just love that. I don't know. It all weirdly works. It was just cool to do it for this one because you're already kind of in this weird like dreamscape hellhole of what's real, what's not real. Yeah, it's my it's bending the mind in so many directions. I just think it was neat. Well, and it kind of blinded me from like all the things that were bad about the movie or how <laughs> terrible some of the effects were. Blah 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 blah. Yes, but it was just like, oh, this is neat. Oh, that was in the original one. Oh, that's that guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like weirdly his proving ground. Wes Craven's proving ground for the Scream movies, where he dove even further into like. But that was more making fun of tropes and mm -hmm. stuff. But like. Yeah. I don't know if I didn't do enough like reading of interviews with him or anything, but I'm I know that he probably was dissatisfied with what they were doing with the nightmare movies and also just horror in general. So yeah. this would that seems like it was kind of his way to get his hands back on it and to steer it in the right direction and it did kind of work. You know, he then made another extremely successful franchise that's still making movies, I think. They're yep. trying. But they're, uh, they're trying to do another one. Trying. But there's yeah. some, you know, there's some <laughs> stuff we shouldn't talk about on the podcast yeah. that is holding that up. But. Yes. Mm. Um, yeah, they talk about that in the documentary. Because basically, Wes Craven did an unrelated interview where he, like, was kind of dogging on Bob Shea and New Line. And, like, he had seen all these um, sequels directed by all these random people and, like, he watched them and was like, none of these make any sense. None of them go together. Like, there's the lore doesn't make any sense. Like, the rule, you're not following the rules I set up. Mm -hmm. And so um, they don't outright say it, but you can kind of read between the lines that Bob Shea gave him a bunch of, like, um, rights to stuff back and, like, cuts, like, percentages of previous movies and then asked him, like, hey, do you want to, like, come back and, like, do your version of what you think this should be. And that's mm -hmm. how he came back to do New Nightmare. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Oh. Well, I feel like with even with the other franchises, like if you look at the Halloween series, there's some real crappers in there. You know <laughs> what, what I mean? What do you mean? The, you, you know what I mean? Even like with Friday the 13th, if you have a, a, a franchise that's like 10, yeah. you know, you're there's always, and if more people get involved in them, like even if you have other like series, like, like if you think of like different, like, like a Harry Potter series, when those movies came out, they they switched directors, they switched that kind of thing. Um, but with horror, I think it's, it's, I don't know, it's all kinds of places you can go. Yeah, and this franchise, like, I don't know, they like one of them is directed by Rennie Harlan, who's like an yeah. action director, and like that, I think that's four, and that one really sucks. Um, <laughs> 
yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's that. I had a lot of built-in prejudice against this movie when it was first picked because there are so many bad ones in the series, but the ones that are good are the Wes Craven ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And looking at his filmography, even though like this came out in his worst period for sure, because I think what came out afterwards, Vampire in Brooklyn. I don't even know what that is. That is, (laughs) that is came out two years later. Right. So we got that out of it, but like on the other side of it, you had like people under the stairs, shocker, Vampire oh, Brooklyn. God, I just the watched stairs. that. Which one? People under the <laughs> stairs? I, yeah. Oh, I had a lot of fun. I've I heard that good in, things about it. Yeah. But oh, I, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen it. Mm. Well, I kind of jumped ship on Wes Craven it's, because I don't it's know. It's another family movie. No, yeah. it is not. No, it is <laughs> it's not. It's a funny movie. It's, it feels <laughs> like it. I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, really? I mean. Mm-mm. If well, you like watching little girls get scalded, it's a family geez. movie. <laughs> Well, well, who doesn't love that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it really does feel. It feels like a like a, a kids Disney made for TV. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. It really does. And especially with the wrap up at the end. <laughs> okay. I was going to take us out just for a second and talk about the first Wes Craven movie I saw, oh. which was his first movie. Oh. Which traumatized That's me. That's one on the left or Yes. Yeah. Uh. And uh, that was right when I was reaching the limit of the cheap video rentals. Uh, way too much. And I, you know, I haven't seen it since the 80s. Yeah, I, I don't really want to go back to that one. No. it's It may have some interesting redeeming qualities, but I don't remember anything good about it whatsoever. I didn't don't remember any message, just... Revenge. Horrible, <laughs> Revenge horrible and horror. Heebie jeebies. It's, yeah. I don't, oh I don't my like it. God. Yeah. So nasty. Yeah. I remember, I probably saw that for the first time maybe four years ago. Oh God. Did it must have bothered you? At least I have the benefit it of. It didn't bother me. It was gross, but it was just another movie. But also, I think it's a good one to watch. It's good to. I was happy to have. Not happy, but I was glad I'd seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm pretty sure I saw. Is there a remake? There is a remake. I think I saw the remake first mm-hmm. in high school. And it's then creepy saw and weird. Is that the 70s? It's, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Video nasty. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to see what's going to happen to Dylan? Yeah. Poor Dylan. He's woken up in a panic. <laughs> and poor Heather <laughs> says, I just have this weird feeling today. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, right, the 19th earthquake. <laughs> right. Oh, the earthquakes are a throwback to the first one, which I didn't realize. Really? Um, because there's all the, like, there's so many earthquakes in this one, and then there were real life earthquakes around the same time they were filming. So there's oh, real footage. It's weird. Yeah. But um, I rewatched the first movie, and right at the beginning, Tina, or whoever the random girl Tina. who dies first, she says, oh, there's been a lot of earthquakes lately. Oh, really? And hmm. there's no earthquake that's, in that movie, but it's just like... That's a good thing to know, seed. though. That was on purpose. Oh, can I also say, I find it so funny. Freddy dies in every fucking movie. And in this one, they're like, bring Fre- Freddy back. No, Freddy's dead for real. It's like, he's never been dead for yeah. real. Come on. They never die. All right, so here we are. We're back, and Nancy has gotten home from New Line. Her son is having a screaming fit. His his uh, toy is destroyed. Um, so after the episode, Heather calls her husband at work. He's working on set. He works for New Line also, and he asks him to come home, or she asks him to come home. He had been working on Freddie's glove, and he leaves the set to go home with his family. He says he'll be there in three hours. I don't know why it's so far. After he leaves, we see a shot of the workbench and the glove in progress is gone. That (laughs) night, Heather is reading Dylan a bedtime story of Hansel and Gretel and he creeps her out by repeating some of the lines. He tells her that his T-Rex protects him from the mean old man with the claws who wants to come up while they sleep. Meanwhile, the dad, Chase, is drowsily driving home. Heather has a nightmare that Freddy attacked Chance. She wakes up. The cops are at her door. They inform her that Chase fell asleep while driving and died. Heather then heads to the hospital to see his body. Heather sees slash marks on his chest, just like she saw in her nightmare. We then head to Chase's funeral, and there's another earthquake. We see a shot of Freddie and Dylan in Chase's casket, and Heather jumps in after them and tries to pull Dylan out. 
And apparently Heather was knocked out at the funeral during the earthquake. And so that part in the casket was just one of her nightmares. Um, I love this little section. It, this movie happens so fast. Everything is boom, 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 boom. Um, we had a really great throwback of when Chase is driving and the claw comes up between his legs, oh. like, <laughs> like Nancy in the bathtub. Yep. I was like, yep, he yep. He gives him a little knock, knock. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and he's, he starts singing R.E.M. I know. You know stay awake. <laughs> yeah, losing my religion. And they had to pay for that. Really? Oh, That's like, man. it's in the credits. So they actually had to pay to license that. I was that, wondering why was that funny. one. That probably like cost them a lot of money yeah. too. I know it would have been like, it would have been out at this point. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't know why they picked that. It's, it is a weird The whole choice. scene is weird. The whole scene's weird. Um, yeah. A little, little tap tap on his, <laughs> <laughs> on his crotch is pretty funny. Although I have to say, this is my favorite chase scene where he is falling asleep because if you've ever been in that position, you are just desperately shaking your head. You roll the window You're down. doing the window You're thing. You're singing yeah. R.E.M. You're yeah. doing anything you can, <laughs> and you're just falling asleep. That's that's. Yeah. This is one of the scariest scenes for me. Well, and we had, yeah, for sure. And But I, like, by this point, we had experienced so many fucking earthquakes and so many, like, <sighs> Oh, it was just a dream that I in the in my notes was like, this is probably a dream. Yeah. This is probably just another dream. Why is he tapping him on the dick? <laughs> it's just gonna be a dream. Yeah. <laughs> but then it isn't. Because because the, the cops are there and it's yeah. and it's Well real. one thing too with this movie is just that, Matt. You don't know. Is this one are they dreaming or is this the moment where he has come over to the other side already? Right. Which is so right. much fun to just wait. It kind of yeah. It's I think that's how it keeps you in. Mm-hmm. We get the Jaws cam too. Remember when? Oh, the the, the when, focus pole when yeah, she's on the phone, the Hitchcock oh, focus pole that's thing. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's when Heather is going to open the door, isn't it? Or the phone rings. It's or? like right when the. It's like she's on the phone, and then I think they knock on the door because yeah. it's like Freddie. It's like somebody with the Freddie voice is calling her. Right. Again, right. Yeah. Isn't that what it is? I think. I just know that I wrote Hitchcock focus pole. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many phone calls. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, lots of, yeah, landlines. They were still a big thing then. Yeah, one thing is when um, when they're reading the story of Hansel and Gretel, that kind of is setting up a bunch of stuff. And I like, and the kid really does get creepy in this where he starts reciting all of the lines. And then, and then the daddy, they get home and the daddy gives him a big hug. <laughs> but I like what he said when um, they're like, they're leaving bread comes out for dad to find his way home. And then the mom leaves. Then he's like, if the birds don't eat them first. Yeah. And I'm like, dang, are you not a cool horror kid or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote that um, when Miko Hughes says never sleep again. It like really freaked me out. Also, he's yeah. eight when he's filming this. So wow. Funny. Yeah. Right in the prime of his career. <laughs> you know what's interesting <clears throat> is um, one, he does act still but a couple of years ago he fun like he did a gofundme or a kickstarter or indiegogo or something to make dylan's new nightmare a fan like hosted Ooh. video that's like him as an adult huh. i watched it during my lunch break today and it was interesting you you that thing got made yes it's Ooh. on youtube Ooh. It's oh, half wow. an hour it's like a short but i'm looking um, it up that sounds neat yeah he's not a bad actor as an adult Nice. Um, and it is interesting because the one question I had after watching all of these movies is how are these people not in prison afterward? Because there's no proof. There's no way to, yes. There's just like blended up people all over the place. Yeah. I remember feeling that way very strongly about the first one with, with exploding Johnny Depp. Like, how mm-hmm. is this not more of a thing? Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Oddly enough, though, Chase is in pretty good shape in the morgue. Oh, yeah, just just a little flash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but the rest of him is fine. Yeah, yeah. well, he's a little, he's a little like, blue-gray sort of. Right. Like, he had, like, a little once-over makeup on his face. But he's right. looking for, yeah, for being in a fucking car accident. R- exactly. <laughs> like, where and, he would have been going freeway speeds mm-hmm. when he got killed. So he would have been, like... 
nothing. He right. would have been a, a fine mist. Yeah. Exactly. And the person in the morgue really lays it on. Well, he was in a car accident. Yeah. So that's where he got those slashes. Yeah, right. <laughs> the guy in the morgue is kind of nice, though. Yeah, He's that's like, true. Which one? There were four. The that guy was, who lifts it, yeah. Yeah. No, I just, I the morgue was funny because she was able to just walk in with no resistance at all. Like, she just took the elevator straight down there, and they were just kind of... One guy's, like, eating a sandwich, I think, in the background, <laughs> and they're kind of, like, messing around in some lady's organs. They're and just they've got a body saw. Parts. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're just destroying body parts, and yeah. she just, like, walks in, and, oh, Chase so-and-so, and then she just, oh, back here. And then, and after that, the guy says, well, aren't you going to sign? Right. <laughs> oh. Like, sign yeah. what? <laughs> I'm... Yeah. I'm not even supposed to be here. He's like weirdly consoling her and like he says something profound at one point. Anyway, they gave they gave this guy a lot to do and it was and, he, yeah. and I liked it. Well, then she asked, she sees him, she covers him back up and then she says, "I want to see him again." And he's like, "Oh, you don't want to do that." And so then he lifts up the sheet. She wants to see his chest and she sees it, she pukes, and then he's like, "That's why we don't lift the sheet past the face, ma'am." Yeah. <laughs> Well, first he says, it's what we don't see that gets us through the night. That's the thing yeah. he says. That's right. <laughs> God. Yeah. But the whole, even when she first gets to the morgue, she's down a hallway. There's just bodies on co cots, like in the hallway. Oh, yeah. On gurneys. Yeah. There's just some She some just like walked in. Like, feet. She's got her hall pass now because she's just roaming. Yeah. <laughs> Screw your pass. <laughs> she's just roaming around. Like... <laughs> Um, um, but it was it's a it's it's cool, it's a cool setup. We have another nightmare. Freddy's in the casket, and we know that there's some. He really is trying to pull them down into the other world or come up to ours. This this is this scene weirdly the thing with the casket kind of reminded me of Pet Cemetery um, mm -hmm. because of the funeral home scene in that with the like funeral. Do you remember? Okay, so the like they get um, the main character gets into a like an argument with the with his father-in-law and it turns into a squabble and then they knock the casket over and you see a little bit of, of floppage. Yeah. Yeah. Of, the, of a kid in that case. It's like one of the more fucked up scenes in that movie that they kept from the book. This like, this gives you that with the same kid in the casket. Anyway, it's, a, it's like a, it was a weird little crossover. There's a few of these and I think it might just be because I'm seeing the same kid that's in both of these mm -hmm. movies. Yeah. But, I, there's the big one later. Yeah. It um, is freaky seeing how far down, like how deep the end of the casket is, like going into the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I found strange about this is um, like the funeral scene. It's so many of the same actors from the first movie. Mm -hmm. Like why are some of the like side characters from the first movie at Heather's husband's like, where are their family members? Why is it mm -hmm. so many act like, and yeah. it's um, shot the exact same way, like from the same angle as the funeral scene from the first movie? Mm -hmm. well, it's interesting because when that all happens and when, when Heather hits her head, the actor who played her dad, John, is there like mm -hmm. helping her and consoling her. And it's it's weird because even watching it, I'm like, oh, her dad's there. It's not her dad. It's not her That's dad. A, she's not Nancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so even as a viewer, you're kind of like, wait a minute. But I also wondered that too. I was like, oh, well, where are the where are the other grandparents or mm -hmm. where's the f family friends the nanny was there um but yeah i had a similar yeah idea but maybe they were all estranged and she really relies on those you know background actors yeah and her tv dad you know tv dads i mean movie dads you form a strong bond oh, jack horseman sure <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, John Saxon is great. Yeah, I got very excited when I saw. So him. did I. I, I. I just yelled, "John Saxon!" Aww, because <laughs> that's I, what I wrote in my notes. Yeah. John Saxon. <laughs> With an exclamation mark. Oh, <laughs> twins! Twins! Oh my gosh! Brothers. And then right underneath <clears throat> that, these pesky earthquakes. <laughs> but that one wasn't real. So, er, sorry, no, it was real. The nightmare part of it. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, that's correct. Because yeah. she was um, knocked out. Yeah. I only know John Saxon from Black Christmas. What oh, cool. do you know him from? Uh, he is a villain in several A-Team episodes. I know him from a couple of Charles Bronson movies. Um, I know him from Nightmare on Elm Street, obviously. Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon. Um, he's in a lot of stuff. He's he's one of those guys in like a ton of 70s things. Huh. I feel like there are some um, 
He was a teen idol, apparently. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Still an idol to me. His character in the Nightmare on Elm Street series is, like, the most interesting to me. Mm -hmm. To go from, like, lieutenant in the first one. And then in the third one, he's, like, demoted to, like, a mall cop or something. And he's, like, at the bar drinking because he, like, kind of fucked up their whole lives. Um, Yeah, and then I think the rails. I think his character is really interesting here, too, where he's, Mm -hmm. like, kind of playing both. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when that slip happens later, whoa. He's two, he's two dads at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Well, and, you, and we'll get to it, but you feel that shift when that, that scene, that was the big shift for me. Oh, I don't. Yeah. 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 That was. that. Anyway, we'll get to that. <laughs> also, Rex. I love him. Oh, Best character yeah. in this whole movie. That is. Rex Ravis. has a huge part in this. Rex is important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I guess Miko Hughes and Wes Craven have both of the Rexes. Like, yes. I mean, Wes Craven obviously doesn't now, right. Right. but did. Buried with it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> to keep him safe so that Freddy doesn't pull him Freddy down at the end. Down. Yep. Oh my Through God. Through the satin tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. All right, so post-funeral, Heather and Dylan are back at home. Dylan is watching Nightmare on Elm Street 1 in a trance. He was sleepwalking. He starts singing, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. And says that the mean man is trying to get up into our world. Heather is freaking out. Um, later on, they go to bed, they go to sleep. He asks, can you come with me in my dreams? Her response, I think that only happens in the movies. Then the, later on, there's a scene in the park with her actor friend, John, who she saw at the funeral. <laughs> um, he's when one who played her dad. And so her son is playing and he's, doing this thing where he climbs to a tall tower and tries to reach the sky. And Heather and John are chatting about how she is worried that her family's mental issues have been passed on to her and her son and that this is more than just her worrying about a crazed fan. She later, after that, gets home. She calls Robert England and turns out he is also picking up some dark Freddy vibes and has been painting visions. Uh, she asks if he knows when Wes will be done writing the script for the new movie. Robert said that Wes says it was done up to the part where Dylan tries to reach God, which we just witnessed in the park. Dun, dun, dun. So another <laughs> little breadcrumb left for us. We're chomping it up. Um, later that night, Dylan is sleepwalking. Heather wakes up in her bed. The sheets are shredded, and she dreamed that Dylan taped knives knife to his fingers and came after her. Awake, Dylan is now in the kitchen, and they get a call from the stalker. A tongue comes out of the telephone. <laughs> Dylan pukes and has a fit. She then takes him to the hospital and he has to stay there for tests and Heather leaves. She can't get hold of Robert, so she goes to Wes Craven's house and wants to know what the new Nightmare script is about. All right. So Wes explains that an old entity, a dark being, has existed in different forms in different times, and it lives for the murder of innocents. <laughs> it is kept alive through story, and once the story dies, the evil is set free. Freddy, in its Freddy is his current version. For 10 years, he was held captive as Freddy in the Nightmare on Elm Street series. But now that the films have ended, the entity has come alive and he's crossed out of films and into their reality. He says that Nancy is the only one who can stop him. The only way to, the only way to stop him is to make another movie. Is Heather willing to play Nancy one last time? Holy smokes, you guys. It's a lot of stuff to chew on in that. Who? <laughs> uh, love the safety standards of the 1994 playground. <laughs> <laughs> like, why the fuck would that have an openable hatch at the top? <laughs> um, that was actually like, a, that was a scene of like true tension. Um, watching it, watching him climb up there, she's like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. He's going to get out. He's going to get up on top. And then why is he reaching up there? And this line, God wouldn't take me. Yeah. That's brutal. Mm-hmm. I wrote yes. that in all caps in my <laughs> notes. Well, because like the night before, he was talking to her in bed like, oh, why would God make something bad happen? Yeah, why does God let there be bad things? <laughs> kind of love that conversation. Like, I, Yeah. Uh, so I'm probably an outlier here. I'm not a fan sure. of little baby Dylan <laughs> because he reminds me a little too much of Newt from Aliens. Oh, uh, okay. And, yeah. you know, Newt does as well as she can 
but it's too cloying. It's just sure. too, too much. And all I could think of was Newt when Dylan is on on screen. I'm glad we found a way to bring up aliens. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't disagree with you. And she also switches her accent several times. In really? The movie. Yeah, it's okay. Well, I think what seems like that. I just I love that kid as an actor, though. I love him in this movie. But I feel like with those little tender scenes, you had you still had to show you had to, there had to be some tugging on heartstrings of this mother and this small boy who are being tormented, and also the husband and dad just died, which mm-hmm. no one, it's like an afterthought. He already yeah. just died five minutes ago. Um, so I feel like with those, it's kind of having that tender like mother-son moment. I mean, I hate the way everybody picks up this kid and carries him around. He's freaking like a giant child. Yeah. He and a toddler nanny. He's fine. Well, yeah. I'm glad you said that because one I'm of the like, first times he was on screen, his clothes are so baggy. I thought I was looking at like, the dad from Frasier shrunken down. <laughs> That's all I could see him as. But with this little tiny voice, huh. it was so weird. His clothes, he's, he wears old man clothes. Yeah. <laughs> if you think back to what he's wearing in the whole movie, like sure. baggy XL flannels. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those were his favorite jammies. Yeah, he was at the end of the grunge era, so he was just a little bit too late for the. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, Nancy was on, or Heather was on point with her giant uh, shoulder pads yes. and her little like suits and her hair and her jeans and her flannel and her brown boots. I was like, I had that outfit in 1994. Her outfit when she goes to that interview at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Whoo! Yeah, it was banging. There was totally some Dana Scully stuff right there. Yep. Oh my god. Exactly. Yeah, '90s fashion was no joke. I don't know. I don't know. '94. I was, I guess. Oh, I guess I would have been a sophomore or freshman in college when this movie came out. Wow. Wait, hmm. October '94. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. I did love his the knives on his fingers though. Yeah, that was, that <laughs> was, that was creepy. a great scene. That yeah. was scary. Like that kid looked very menacing, and I was afraid of him. He's yeah. such a good actor. He's really good at either being super little kid innocent. Or the creepiest fucking kid you've Switch ever to, seen in your yeah. life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Whoever designed the playground spaceship should be shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that whole playground was demolished after they filmed um, and replaced with a different playground. However, the spaceship they took and installed in Miko Hughes' backyard, and it's still there. In the documentary, he, like, climbs up to the top as an adult and, like, oh my gosh, something Oh, my gosh, that's cool. Isn't that funny? Does what he go of... out of the little hatch? No, he's on, he doesn't fit inside. inside. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny. That's pretty awesome. That's bizarre. I always think it's so interesting when you hear about what pieces and relics from the set that actors have at their homes or things that a lot of people steal things or take yeah. things. Or wasn't a bunch of stuff like destroyed after the, the original nightmare? Yeah. And I think someone stole one of the hands or some, like, yeah. something. Like yeah. Weren't that. there only two original gloves? I had read something about this, and that's part of why um, Wes Craven held on to the two, like, the, the two Rexes were, were taken because they, they knew that they would just throw it away because mm-hmm. the studio doesn't have a reason to care about it necessarily, which is ridiculous to me but, i like yeah. it when like years later actors will be like oh yeah i accidentally took that I shirt that i shirt. have that yeah. I, have, <laughs> I have that sword oh i've got my crown yeah <laughs> like lo- watching the, the actors who are in lord of the rings they like, talk about all the stuff they have and i'm just like oh my god oh my god <laughs> <Yeah>. what <laughs> and their little matching tattoos yeah. Oh, yeah. My lo- oh my goodness new line new line cinema yeah that's true and bob Che the, is the same producer he produced mm-hmm. all the nightmare movies and the lord of the rings movies and his sister is the nurse that's yeah, in the hospital Lynn who's Shea. in all oh, those Fairly her. Brothers movies. Yeah. That's where I recognize her from. Exactly. I, right. Like Kingpin. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. That was another movie I watched with my dad. <laughs> that has not aged well. Have you watched it recently? No. Kingpin? I, Kingpin. Uh, there's some... There's some stuff that do, that wouldn't fly today. In I that think that movie. came out like in '95, right? Six, '96. '96. It was after Dumb and Dumber. Yeah. It's got one of my favorite all-time quotes in it. Kingpin. Yes. Hey, Merv, how's life? Taken forever. Oh, <laughs> I like that. God, that rules. Oh. Taken forever. Well, uh, that actress, she was in the first one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. 
right. Yeah. Right. She's also yeah. Elaine in yeah. all of yeah. the Insidious I movies. I love her. Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, right. I just want to trust her and let me go, oh, yes, please help me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like a huge horror actor. Mm-hmm. She's in a bunch of other random horror movies. It's cool. It's are in The Final Wish, which I wouldn't recommend. The Final Wish. Is that what it's called? Is it a genie movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a new horror genre that we haven't tapped into yet? That's right. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. probably we're gonna we're gonna look back on this in four years, and and there'll already be six things that six suck. genie movies. Yeah. Hey, if you're looking for a good gin movie, I recommend Under the Shadow. Hmm. And if you're not, probably too not bad. Watch it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Final Wish. It came out in 2018, and it also has Tony Todd. Oh, cool. Well, speaking of genies trapped in bottles, how about this freaking Freddy thing? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Just in general. In no, general. What do you mean? Because now he's out of the, she says he's the genie who's come out of the bottle. Oh, yes. And like, and Wes is just talking about this, like it's some, oh, by the way, I'm having these dreams. And whenever I have a dream at night, I just get up and write down the next page of the script. I don't ever know what's going to happen. And she's like, you knew Chase was going to die. I it, fucking love it. I, this, this was where I was like, yep, I'm on board with this yeah. movie. I rewound it like four times. I was like, wait, no, what? This is crazy. You get like a whole like two minute uninterrupted thing of Wes Craven just explaining to you what this movie is. <laughs> I, I think it is so funny and also so great. He has a weird window treatment that I didn't understand in the room that he was doing that <laughs> with. Um, but I also, so I started in my typical annoying fashion, started to try to figure out more of what was happening in this movie. So I went, all right, the earthquakes are Freddy. Freddy is these earthquakes. That's what's, if Freddy's causing the earthquakes. That's why, but obviously that's not the case. No, um, I think it's, some of wait, them it's not sure. It's yeah. not, or yeah. it is? Oh, I thought some it was. Of them, some of them, I think there's one maybe that's real. There's something that's real, but, but these are him. He's underground. Mm-hmm. Cause like w- w- the one earthquake, there's like giant slashes across the wall, like yeah, his fingers. Right? Huh? So that earthquake that happened in '94, the real one, is Freddy's fault. Yes, dude. And Wes Craven put him back in the bottle. My God. And then he died with that. Oh, there's also some scene where, uh, uh, like, when she gets in her Volvo station wagon, where somebody yells, "Wake up, lady!" <laughs> 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 Which I really love. She's like, go get it together. So Freddy is the earthquakes? I think so. I think so. That was my interpretation. Okay, so Not then I was right. Freddy some... is the earthquakes. Because yeah. <laughs> so, I, by the end, was like, well, Freddy shit, I guess that wasn't it. Because he had, cause, you know, we go to his his special little hell world. That, anyway, okay. Well, because some are real, because when they're driving around, there is an earthquake. Yeah. And like, when they're at their funeral, they're like, oh, it's just another earthquake. Mm. Like, there's... Some of them are real, but then some of them, like when she's in the hospital and her arm is all slashed later and she's like, oh, it's from the earthquake. And the woman like, there was an earthquake this morning. Mm-hmm. I think so. Okay. So, so I think, some are real and some of them are not. They're Freddy. And maybe one of the ones that was not was what made me think, okay, then the earthquakes are just like a, a weird little plot device. But Matt, we're all asleep right now. Wow. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> Holy shit. I really like this though, because it's like um, all of the good Freddy movies. It's like there are real life like ex- like circumstances where you could point to it and be like, "Oh, you're sleep deprived. Oh, there's been a bunch of earthquakes. Oh, your husband just died, and that's why these things are happening to you." But we all actually know that it's Freddy the whole time. So I, yeah. I love that like uh, push and pull mm-hmm. all the time of like from the outside. Absolutely, it seems like someone is having a mental health crisis, <laughs> <laughs> but. It like feeds into that like no one believes me. I can't turn to anybody. I have to like take exactly. them on myself. Exactly, which is what she's doing. I think for a meta storyline though, I still have to go back to In the Mouth of Madness, mm. which I think is really interesting because it goes one step further and it puts you, the viewer, into the movie. And I think it. I think this movie stops just short of that. So I don't think we viewing the movie are actually in it. Yeah. Right? Didn't they come out the same they year? They did come out the same I was are just you thinking that. Me? They came out the same year. Yeah. No, I don't think we're in it. In, not in not in West Craven. But the movie we're we're just watching it out as it was being right. written. Christopher, I have the movie for you, but I can't tell you about it because I am hoping that one day we will do it on the pod. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. Ah. All right. That's exciting. 
Um, this one also another phone call. This was when the tongue we first see the tongue come back out of the phone, like the first one. I love oh, that so I much. I hate all the tongue shit. It's so <laughs> gross. Uh, I mean, the the one later is grosser, but I thought that was pretty cool. Um, the scenes in the hospital though are just uh, that nurse, and when she gets there, it's and then she just has to leave him there for further testing. And, Why is he in an oxygen tent? <laughs> Something like happened to him when Nancy left, and then she comes back and he's in the tent. Yeah, I don't understand medically what could be. That's happening, where I'm coming from. I'm I'm looking for the the real answers. Yeah. I think the only reason they have it in there is there's such a like motif of ripping through something. Mm-hmm. Like later oh, when cool. he like rises up under that bed sheet, he rips through it. I think it's just like having that occur so many times. Sure. Are you guys ready to go to the hospital, or do we have anything else to break apart on this the whole, section? The only other notes that I had are uh, Robert England's very forlorn answering machine greeting when she calls him. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and I was then, very confused by that. I'm going to be away for don't know when I'm coming back. Yeah. What happens to him? We Where'd never find out. Where would he go? He had to go be. Is Freddy. he? Is he really <laughs> Freddy? Like. I don't well, know. We'll never know. He would wink at you if you asked him that. <laughs> and then I also made a note of um, when she's talking to Wes Craven, she says something along the lines of like, well, what is, what, is, what is it that he wants? And he goes, well, the murder of innocence. <laughs> <laughs> so matter of fact that I, I couldn't help but write that down. All of his delivery is so funny and like sort of sinister because he's like the conduit for this and he's just letting it happen and not telling anybody. Right. Yeah. Weird. Which which also made me think, is he causing these earthquakes? Is he writing earthquakes into this movie? Oh, (laughs) it could be. The all powerful (laughs) West (laughs) Craven. There were just so many fucking earthquakes in this. One part was not clear to me, and it was really, really quick. It's when Heather is asleep in her bed, and it's right before Freddie rips through, I think, and comes to life and chases her around the bedroom. The camera pans back and forth and back and forth between her nightstand and the coffee pot on the floor. We've already seen the coffee pot. We know she's drinking coffee. Did, did this scene register for anybody? It registered with me, and I was thinking of – her picking up the carafe and using it as like a weapon Mm. that didn't happen. But when that was happening, I was like, why are we seeing the coffee pot? uh, Yeah. Over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was missing something. But then there's there's an earthquake. Is it this scene where the coffee pot lands on the floor? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Maybe it's just a throwback to the first movie. Yeah. Yeah, It could be be so much coffee. She drinks coffee all constantly in this movie. Yeah. We should all be drinking coffee right now. You guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christopher is. I I got my tea, got my grim leafer. (laughs) Um, the only other note I have is there's like a tiny little snippet of dialogue where Heather says that there's like madness in her family. Yeah. I have no idea what that's about. It really doesn't come up again. Um, but having watched Dylan's new nightmare in that she has been like uh, permanently hospitalized because she's Nance, quote unquote er, Heather? crazy. Heather. Right. Yes. And so it's Heather has yes, and so it's Miko Hughes like unable oh, to talk Dylan to the is one Heather's person kid. <gasps> That's who understands. Cool. Yeah, well, I freaking like it. Maybe I I might be wrong about this, but wasn't there something in the first one about her mom? having like psychological issues i thought that that was like the, oh. i think that's the madness in the family her mom is an alcoholic yeah but it's like she gets murdered yeah but the, but i vaguely remember there being some she says there's a close family member when she's talking to john in the park yeah she says institutionalized yeah mm. which hmm. although it's at this point <laughs> at this point are we in her life or her real life I can't, like I don't know what it it's Heather it's Heather so she's still total at the end I kept, when I was making my notes I was like Nancy said I'm like nope Heather said who said right oh yeah I love it it worked they did it they found a way to make me yeah, yeah. to make everybody ask these questions which is pretty cool I mean as a movie goer I mean that's all you can do is just be entertained and have a movie that's long like go by fast where you're asking questions you're laughing I yeah. think for this, like, I'm not, I like meta and things. I think it's fun. It's smart. But for this, watching it, for me, it's like part of it is the nostalgia of it, like reliving the thing and doing that. Mm-hmm. That was a huge part of like why it worked. Oh, yeah. Cause it's nostalgia for something mm-hmm. that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, plus like Wes Craven's involvement. Like, yeah. That, that, me- that means that it gets a cosign from him too, which I think, I don't know. Yeah. I, 
I I respect Wes Craven, and I'm glad that he got to do something good with this before somebody got it away from him and ruined it yep. some more <laughs> for, for two or three more movies. Um, two? There's Freddy vs. Jason and then the remake, which are both yeah. dog shit. Yeah. I do want to see Freddy vs. Jason. Oh, it's, boy. I, Cornfield. Sorry, there's there's a... Oh, man. Well, the library has the, the double set, so you can watch New Nightmare, and then you can watch Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. I watched it, and I had seen it when it came out, and I was like, oh, okay, like, you know, 2003, it's not going to be... It was one of the worst fucking things I've ever seen in my life. I it's, don't know if it's even worth It's apocalyptic. I got to finish I gotta finish Nightmare 2 first. Yes. That one I'm going to finish. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I, I really had a good time rewatching the first one. Yeah, you and will the, not. It's not have one. That like, I'll watch, I'll rewatch uh, the original Friday the 13th. I'll rewatch several of the Halloween movies. Freddy's not a series, not because I don't like it or because I was afraid as a kid. It's just not what, the one I want to get sucked into. No, it's. Yeah. Slasher on Slasher yeah. just doesn't sound interesting at all. I mean, Godzilla versus Mothra, you well, know, that's a big battle. Well, especially but. because Freddy and Jason have such distinctly different rules mm -hmm. and, like, also which Jason, because there's, like, yeah. four different types of Jason. And you <laughs> can't thing. kill either one of them. We already know that. Right, unless, well, you can kill Jason, but if somebody eats his heart, then you become Jason <laughs> <laughs> or something. I can't remember how that one worked. Oh, it sucks. I I tried to watch it because I thought the same thing. I was trying to clean up th this franchise and just see them all so I could have an informed opinion about them. This, I don't know. This this one's more of a slog, this, this franchise, I think. Mm -hmm. So this anyway, New Nightmare was a bright spot though for yeah. me. It's the brightest spot. We're having some really rosy dreams. Beautiful things are happening. We're gonna wake up to rainbows, <laughs> and those rainbows might just be caused by claw hands on our wall after an earthquake. <laughs> just saying. Um, all right, so we are ready to head back to the hospital to find out what's up with Dylan. Um, now that Heather has all the answers about what's going on, um, Dylan is still in the hospital, and after she leaves Wes's, she is reading up on schizophrenia in children and how some of the behaviors are similar to sleep deprivation. While doing so, the TV news reveals that the bodies of two murdered special effects guys from earlier in the movie, uh, they are found, and there's also another earthquake that's reported about. Freddie comes out of the closet during a nightmare, after all of that, uh, Heather heads to the hospital. Dylan is in this oxygen tent, and the nurse is suspicious when Heather says that Dylan is afraid of Freddie in real life. As she should be. She has a dream. Dylan has an episode. She's panicking in the hospital. The staff do not think that Heather is well, and they question her ability to care for her son. The nanny shows up, trying to get in to see him. Eventually, Heather can't see him, but the nanny's allowed to stay with him, so she's in his room. Um, he is given a shot so he falls he was trying to stay awake but the poor kid falls asleep uh freddy murders the nanny in a very similar fashion to tina dying in nightmare one which is really cool being dragged across the ceiling and after all that happens heather comes back in the staff are all there dylan's gone he apparently was sleepwalking from the hospital across the freeway to home and nancy is headed over there now so, yeah, weird little hospital scene, cool death. Yep. Very well filmed, I thought, dragging her. Oh, I, the... mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This scene is great. This yeah. was the scene I had seen from this movie. This is the only thing I had seen. So I had none of the context of this is a meta movie. I just went, wait, they're just kind of redoing the thing for the first one. I'm not going to watch this movie, ah. I think. Um, yeah. I I saw this movie first before I ever saw the original. And so when I saw what? the original, I was like, why would you do that? Again, it was free on was, Comcast On Demand in 2010. There it is. <laughs> it's also how I've seen a lot of Asian horror movies. Interesting. Well, I, it's just having it be such a long franchise. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is interesting because, like, when I think of Heather, I see this Heather. So then watching her in the original, I'm like, she is so young. So, it's so young. weird. Yeah. Same with Freddy. It's like, I think of this Freddy when I think of Freddy Krueger, not the, like, pepperoni. Oh, really? Pepperoni Not pizza the funny looking one from the first one. Yeah, yeah. Right. interesting. I'm not quite sold on Freddy up in the clouds. Oh, I <laughs> I am from a comedic standpoint. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm loving Freddy up in the clouds. Have you seen three, four, and five of this? 
No. Oh, okay. This is not the most ridiculous thing that you get to see Freddy do. <laughs> in five, he's a fetus. Yeah. A oh. Freddy fetus. He turns baby. into a motorcycle at one point. He turns into a whole entire fucking house at one point. Oh, I guess he is a dream. A snake in the third one. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. That snake is actually cool. He gets killed in a video game, I think. Or he is a computer. He is a television. He's he's all kinds of shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's part of what that's part of why this movie exists, because that shit was so bad. Most of it is really bad. Um yeah, I I think that scene is hilarious. Although that's the the highway scene <sighs> does not fit in this movie. No. I think it feels way too much like an action movie. Um, I've also already seen this kid get hit by a truck, so I'm not that worried about it. Yeah, he'll be fine. <laughs> and Freddie keeps like weirdly picking him up just a little bit, <laughs> yeah, a yeah. little bit to here and save there. him <laughs> to save him for some it reason. It looked like a video game. Yeah, the, I mean the effects weren't great. It did give some cool throwbacks to Gage being run over by the semi truck in Pet Cemetery, and I was like, oh, it's the same kid in the same truck. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I don't know how, like, no one got hit by a car. Yeah, yeah, and like because. He was carrying Dylan. She like, shouldn't have told him that their house was just right across the freeway. He and she told him twice. Running. So, of course, when he disappeared, I'm like, oh, yeah, he went home across the highway. I love the morally superior nurse who is just like, how could you let him watch this kind of thing? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, that's where we get that. I think that's where we get that line. Like, everybody knows who Freddy yeah. Krueger is, which is. He's like Santa Claus. Like, <laughs> or, or King Kong. Or King Kong. That's right. <laughs> which is true. It is true. You know? And that's, the, I mean, I knew about Freddie long before yeah. I saw Well, I was impressed, too, that the nurse knew, you mean Freddie from your movies? I'm like, you've not seen Nightmare on Elm Street, lady. Yeah. That lady rocks. Yeah. I love her performance so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially during the dream sequence when she becomes Freddie for a second. Oh. Again, yep. this lady is so menacing and then so, like, straightforward with it in other scenes. Mm-hmm. Love it. I like it when he, when Dylan wake us up when he pukes all over the nanny and there's just this gray like liquidy spew oh, yeah what the before the nanny gets that? killed yeah i like that a lot that's some darkness inside of him coming out they're feeding him terrible things at the hospital because <laughs> well, he puked earlier when he had a fit and like yeah. phone came out of the phone but i like this one i like the puke scene yeah was like, oh. this was like a exorcist it's like bad thing, projectile like... it was bad projectile vomit this is the third puking we've seen yeah. in this movie right because yeah. heather pukes in the morgue you get three pukes yeah. but only two real kills Interesting. <laughs> That's a pretty Wait, high. Four kills. Yeah, there's more than two. Chase, the two uh, the special FX effects guys. guys. Oh, and yeah, then Chuck and Terry or whoever. The but we don't see them really die. We no. hear their bodies were found. Exactly. We see it in the opening, but it's a dream. Right. Then, yeah. Also, one of those guys is in like everything. Um, shoot, what's his name? Uh, Matt Winston. He's been in. He's Stan Winston's son. Really? I don't know the who effects, that is. The effects that's why. Guy oh, stand that's cool. It's very cool. I know him from a Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen movie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of course. Passport to Paris, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Where does that fall in their storied career? Oh. Um, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After all the uh, You're Invited and like detective movies, and before they started doing like so little time and their. You know, middle grade stuff. The only thing I remember about those movies is that there was one of them that was called How the West Was Fun. Yeah. <laughs> which, which rocks. I'm glad that that happened. I no. would love a crossover, though. <laughs> wow. Well, Mary Kay can be like the the Grady twins or the Grady sisters from The Shining. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> they should do that. Maybe when they're like 60, they'll decide they need money and they'll just come back and do something weird. <laughs> I think they're set on money, yeah. right? Aren't they billionaires? Yeah, they have like their clothing fashion stuff? lines. Yeah. 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 Well, good Which for I them. guess good for are like good. Good for yeah. them. Yeah. Good for them. Cause, good for them. Because most child actors do not make it out okay. Well, I think they kind of didn't, but... Miko, Miko did. He's got a playground set and he's making weird <laughs> meta movies. That's right. He's standing on it saying, God wouldn't take me. <laughs> Gosh, she probably is. Um, we A couple other little throwbacks. Uh, Heather is getting that gray streak like she had in the movie when she was a teenager. Um, the nanny says, your hair's turning gray. <laughs> uh, then there's also the scene where Heather's walking through the hospital and somebody says, this is a restricted area. You need to pass. And she yells out, screw your pass. Yep. Just like the first one. I yeah. love that so much. Like little stupid things like that. I was just like, check, love, thanks. Yep. 
it's it's good fan service. It's not like yeah. uh, modern day fan service of there's the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Well, also like yeah. I also trusted it because like Wes Craven is I don't know like she's saying the line. Like Heather Langenkamp is saying the line that Wes Craven yeah. wrote, and they're portraying themselves. Uh, there's some that gave that a little bit more permission for me to love those little things. And it's the whole point of this exercise is like mm-hmm. showing you all that stuff again because you're inside of some bastard version of it. Like, yeah, I don't it know. Makes it weirder. Yeah. Or trippier. This is the most Allison thing I could say right now, but it reminds me of um, when I was a kid, I had the DVD for Toy Story and Toy Story 2. And on the extras, they had all kinds of like Easter eggs and like little like um, deleted scenes or like uh, outtakes and stuff. That's when Easter eggs were fun and not like an expected part of anything. Yep. Absolutely. Toy Story 2, that's where you get that howdy, howdy, howdy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the doctor says she's going to put Dylan in foster care. Yeah. Uh, this hospital's reactions are all extreme. Yeah, I don't think you get to make that call as the doctor. We're going to so put like, him in a tent first. <laughs> yeah, just a little tent. <laughs> We're going to get the oxygen tent out. He might be schizophrenic. Let's get the oxygen We're tent. Gonna get the, <laughs> We're going to get the camping oxygen tent, like the, the portable oxygen tent. I, it's the it's the damnedest thing. And those two nurses who are going to like give him a shot in his arm, and then one of them makes it like Julie's like no, or the nanny is like no, no, please don't. Her mom says no, he can't fall asleep. And then the nurse is like done, and she makes a face like nanny, nanny, nanny. Yeah. yeah, I'm like what the heck? The doctors and, are bad. Well, those, then Julie belts her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I know. And well, Heather like Heather like gives a uh, an elbow to the one of the the belly of one of the doctors when her son is gone, and yeah. it makes like a depth yeah. charge noise. It's yeah. the funny. <laughs> thing I, yeah. I, I but i yeah that. she ain't playing yeah <laughs> yes those two nurses were awful and the one who had like the tray full of all of these like bottles of things and all these like syringes like how are you just having all of these medicines here in the restricted area yeah. <laughs> but he also has the we see the yellow sleeping pills mm-hmm. and those come in later those look exactly like i worked at a gas station for a couple of years and they sell they sold these things called yellow jackets and it's essentially just like these insane caffeine pills and Yikes. that's exactly what those looked like like a no dose or something it's kind of like no dose but they're called yellow jackets and it's like i don't think i think they're off the market cuz they could like make you have a heart attack wow yeah but, so this is the opposite yeah. of that yeah. yeah um those yellow pills i think they're in a previous movie i think that's a callback but it's also a reference to the original inspiration for um, the first movie. Because mm. it's uh, Wes Craven heard of a real life event that inspired Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, All right. Well, oh, what the fuck is Skin the Cat? <laughs> I've never heard of this before in my life. Does he say that in a different movie? No. Freddie says, like, I've... Uh, like Dylan, you're ready? We're going to play a game. Skin the Cat. I was thinking he may have said it in another movie. I thought he was, I was waiting for the skin to be torn off Julie. I was very excited. Yeah. And I was like, wait, oh. Tina didn't have her skin. Her, Did he say it to Tina? No, he, he says it to Dylan. But he, did he say it to Tina in number one? Because it's a similar I don't death think so. to Tina. Because it's possible, but it's like a, it's a, it's a turn of phrase I've heard before was like, there's more than one way to skin, skin a, cat. a cat. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And like. I don't know where it originates from. I don't think it's Freddy, but I could definitely no. see him saying it in the first one or one of the earlier ones, maybe. Yeah, that's an I old don't phrase. That. Yeah. We grew up with it. Yeah. Uh. Back when we used to skin cats. Oh I mean, it, it is such a weird one. It's I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> What's the second way? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> like I just, yeah. Anyway. Um, also, I love Miko Hughes' face when he's like reaching up to try and help Julie, and he also screams for Rex. Oh. Yeah. So I think that same reaching is in the first movie, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Is it? It's it's Johnny Johnny Depp, Depp reaching yeah, up there. Reaching, yeah, I think. Yeah, I oh. think so. Yeah. Uh, I forget how to say his name, but um, the non Johnny Depp guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, he was in the funeral scene. Yes. That actor um, in the documentary talks about how when he was filming the original Nightmare on Elm Street, he was like deep in addiction. Oh. And so he'd show up to set like fucked up. And he struggled with that for 25 years. He also um, is credited under a fake name because he was told that, um, I forget where he's from, but like basically Hispanic people are not like 
will never be like a lead in a movie. So he wow. has like a alternate name credited. Hmm. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Wait, what character? <laughs> um, the guy who plays the bad boy Rod in the first one, Tina's, yeah. Tina's boyfriend, yes. the one yeah. she's sleeping oh, with. Right. Okay. He has All a right. very who small dies, scene. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's or, the one who goes. He's the, the one who goes to jail. jail. Oh, another one. He hangs yeah. himself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Freddie. Well, well Freddie. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I, then I, he's in this movie too. He's at the funeral yeah. for Chase. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Is that wild? Okay. But yeah, he's like very. um like open about it during the documentary. It was like pretty amazing to watch. Just That's talking cool. like him talking yeah. about struggling for twenty five. His name years is Nick Corey. Sheesh. In the movie, like That's credited his, in the movie, it just says Nick Corey as himself. Oh, but his God. real name Rod. is I don't know how to say this. It's J S U is his first name Garcia because he's hmm. Hmm. yeah pretty interesting. Yeah. There's a, another actress named Tuesday Night who played herself. She <laughs> played Kristen Parker in the fourth film. She. Um, Tuesday night, did you, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> that rules. <laughs> um, to, uh, Tuesday night's character is in the third one. It's um, Patricia Arquette, and then they had to recast her because Patricia Arquette right. asked for too much money. Wow. Mm. Also, Patricia Arquette, or that her. Yeah. All right. Um, in four and then later five, um, there's a the main girl is Alice. Yep. And I kept hearing Alice and Alice, and it was like driving mm. me fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, Heather's hair is huge here. Her hair, it she is has good gigantic. hair. Holy smokes. <laughs> all right, so Dylan just did some sleepwalking and a crazy scene from the hospital all the way home. And Nancy gets home, and John is there along with Dylan. There's another earthquake. Freddie crawls out of the bed. John keeps calling Heather Nancy. He tells her Freddie is dead. He leaves. He's got a little policeman's badge on his waist. He's totally like in dad mode now. Um, so Freddie's there. Nancy, I'm going to say, is now wearing the same white pajamas she did earlier in the movie, similar to the one she wore in Nightmare One. Dylan is gone from his room and his protector Rex is shredded. Dylan left those little yellow sleeping pills as breadcrumbs in How to Find Him. So Heather slash Nancy, she's swallowing the pills as she finds them so she can fall asleep and join him. So he, she's doing what he asked her earlier. Can you come with me in my dream? And he did. She is. So um, she slides down to in this crazy tunnel to where she slides down to where Freddie is to find Dylan. Nancy finds a copy of the new screenplay that Russ, Wes was writing. There was no movie. There was only her life. While Freddie is attacking Heather, Dylan stabs him. Heather is knocked out. She's down in the water. Freddie chases Dylan. He's trapped in the little fire thing. Heather wakes up and heads to help Dylan against Freddie. This is, yeah, he's trapped in the furnace. He burns up. The place explodes. <laughs> they are suddenly awake, Dylan and Heather, and they tumble out of bed. And next to them, Heather finds a copy of the movie script on the bedroom floor. Dylan asks if it's a story. And then she begins reading it aloud. And it is, she starts reading what the beginning of this movie was. The end. Yeah. That was some craziness. Uh, it was. Down in Freddyville? It is. <laughs> Freddyville. <laughs> I, the, the part where she realizes that she's in the movie when he has the badge and everything, I just said, hell yeah. <laughs> I, love it. I love that. That part's cool. That said. Oh, then she says, I love you too, daddy. Right. Yeah. Like knowingly. she became Nancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when she had the pajamas on. I was just like, yep, yep. This is cool. Yeah. And then she does the, the satin hallway thing, which is fun. And then the movie really slows down for me. Then I feel every minute of it. I, <laughs> I, un, un, there's something about the Freddy world or the hell or whatever it is that just like, it just doesn't work. If you were, Killed by fire, and you, if, let's assume that Freddy made this place, right? I, I think that's what we're, we're led to believe. I don't know if I would believe that. You think it's just hell, or you think it's Because just... you're going to ask the question, why would he make that? Why would he be down there with all this fire if he's afraid of fire? Yeah. He's always in a boiler room. He's trapped. Yeah. But, well, I'm just saying, why would you have a bunch of little fireplaces around that you could get stuck in? 
Also, he he's foiled by his own place a lot. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he likes the lighting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's just there's. This well, he is has the, a waterfall. There's a pond. There's a whole what I don't know what the heck any of this is. Yeah. Well, I think the the story here is that it's not actually Freddy. It's an ancient evil oh. that is like taking his form or mm-hmm. something. Oh, the current version. So that's is Freddy. Why, Although they use the same aesthetic in other movies, so like whatever. Yeah. And when he was being burned in the furnace, <laughs> that little like devil face horns thing. Yeah. Uh, I was like, okay. Yeah. So maybe was that the, the entity being released from Freddy? Yeah. Because the entity liked our world and our present day, so he wanted to stay. That's fair. Yeah, there was a lot of convoluted hand waving when we go to talk to Wes in his uh, little poolside <laughs> studio. Yeah, you know. <laughs> well, that's the whole series, though. It's just like, that's yeah, you know, yeah. he's just sure. this random thing is going to happen. It totally yeah. makes sense. Just right. Don't worry about it. So the scene when John Saxon tells Nancy slash Heather, you know, something, something, he's dead, whatever. I did really like that because I thought, oh my god. I'm trapped in some other dimension. How do I get out? Uh-huh. And it felt like the last scene in Twin Peaks. Mm. That horrible, horrible, amazing scene. Well, you can't give away whatever that Never is. Never seen it. Are you talking about the last scene in season two? No. The in return? Season, you, in can't talk, okay, you can't okay, okay, say what okay. happens. Uh, did I already? No, but you, can't, you can't say all anything all. more. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not going to say anything more. I've already seen it, but I'm just saying. Right. See, I love spoilers. <laughs> I do. I do too. Well, love, hate. Right. So I thought that was great, and it was really reminiscent of that horrible feeling of, I'm fucked. What do, what do I do now? I'm trapped in some weird fantasy dimension. Mm-hmm. You know, so that was. It was cool. a cool yeah. like breaking or turning point of realization for her, and you can see <clears throat> Heather's face just kind of like puzzling it out, like, "Hey, that's my friend John. Oh, he's got a he's in a cop car. He's got a badge. He's my dad. I'm Nancy. I'm in the movie. Yeah. And then and she has the pajamas on, and then she goes, "I love you too, Daddy." And you can just see her processing, and she's like, "Oh shit, I got to play Nancy one more time and kill Freddie." And it all of that, you can see it on her face. And I really love this. Is like probably my favorite. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I totally. It's agree. just you felt like that, the tenderness of like that being trapped, and also knowing what she has to do. She's also trying to like save her son, and. Yeah, I thought it was I think just a, really well done. I think a big part of what makes that work too is the theme swelling up really big right there. Mm-hmm. I maybe the best thing about this franchise is that theme song. I think that theme song is creepy and great, mm-hmm. and they use it really well. And then they also play the worst music cue when the hell blows up because it sounds like a it sounds like a fucking Christmas song or something. <laughs> like it's like this big orchestral thing that I don't remember it. Well, and then the slap bass starts. The talk show version yeah. of the theme song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's just totally wrecked the mood. It's so funny. <laughs> it's like it does wreck the mood, but like. <laughs> But maybe it doesn't. But maybe, maybe, but it also kind of adds this weird <laughs> levity to it where it's like, don't forget, these movies are a little bit stupid. <laughs> <laughs> when I die, I want a slap bass <laughs> in the church at the very end. Oh, yeah. We will make this happen, Christopher. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, yeah, I wrote, oh my God, the credits song. <laughs> also, the credits are like 10 minutes long. I thought, oh my God, how can this movie be? this much longer and the credits are just really long oh. i didn't watch all of them i did see it said freddy krueger as himself yes yeah. i love that a yep. lot yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah it did not say rex as himself though oh no oh. the only music i remember is um when freddy's like being resurrected under the uh, like on the bed underneath the sheet I like the music there. It like swells and there's like a creaking noise and then he does the like Nosferatu thing with his hands. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. But I also don't know anything about music, so. Yeah. <laughs> I barely remember any of the, I remember like the nursery rhyme being repeated. Mm-hmm. Um I do remember the song playing during the talk show. <laughs> but when like when she's falling into version. Freddy's lair that the sound the effects are just the the visual effects are just like what the crap. It's it kind of it's funny because earlier when when Robert England was painting the that painting and it was the mm-hmm. dark version, I had a weird vision of like Ghostbusters and like what was that being? Ghostbusters two? 
And Ghostbusters, Vigo? when they're the Vigo. Vigo the Carpathian. Vigo, yes. And like there's the evil painting that comes to life. Yeah. And so when he was painting that painting, I was like, oh, this gives me a little like Ghostbusters vibe and like he's gonna come back to life. And then towards the end, when we get down in this lair, I'm like, oh my God, it's Vigo's it gave me that same kind of like because it's like the painted like backdrops, yeah. you know? Yeah. It kind of gave me a weird and they're underground too. Yep. I like, where all the evil is flying or floating through the sewers I like underground. That a lot. I did not put that together. I, I am, it doesn't mean anything if that's not no. how it was, but for me, it had a little like, oh, that's cool though. <laughs> and I am an I am an unabashed defender of Ghostbusters too. I don't care what anybody says. That one's that one's still good. First one's great, but the second Dude, one, it's got that song. Which one? Because there are so many Bobby Brown Bobby songs Brown song, in it. Um, yeah, get control. That's right. The the like. The uh, yeah. mission prep song. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Anyways. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's that movie. Uh, we do have the awesome little throwback of Nancy sinking into the pancake stairs. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. That it, I liked there. that a lot. That so was, did I. Yeah. That, that looked, that worked. That was really good. Even <laughs> the tongue stuff, though. Fuck all that. Yeah. That, it's like <laughs> when the tongue comes out and goes around her neck. Also, why does the kid, the kid just like stabs the tip of the tongue? Just the How tip. about you just cut chop, it off? Cut it off. <laughs> cut whack it off. Thing off. Yeah. <laughs> and then later you see Freddie with like a little forked tongue before it goes back right. in his mouth. And <laughs> to be fair, I'm like, come on. He's eight. He's yeah. doing the True. best he can. He is doing the best he can. <laughs> he did stab he him. He chose though. the path of most resistance. He did freaking <laughs> stab him, which I was yeah. impressed by that. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man, this kid, we thought he had problems before. Oh, uh, yeah. The little scene where um, Miko Hughes is like running and he goes up to the like iron bars and Freddy's behind it and then he turns around and Freddy's on the side. I guess they actually like that's his real reaction. He didn't oh. realize Robert Englund was going to come from the Be in side. Both places. And he they had to like stop production for a second because he was like really that's scary. That's cool, but also oh, like sad. don't do that to a kid. <laughs> <Yeah>. Come on. <laughs> they also talked about. Um, uh, he has to do so many different things in this movie. And so whenever they needed him to like be sad, um, there was like one thing they would do, but um, if they couldn't get him to do it, like, I guess his parents were like, Oh, there's one thing we can try. And then the mom left. And then the the dad went up to Miko Hughes and was like, your mom is dead. And that's how they like got that reaction. about that. (laughs) And then he got a happy meal as like, a reward. Oh my God! <laughs> Cash the check. Let's go. Sheesh. <laughs> big bastard of a check. A big bastard. <laughs> oh my God! That's horrible. Yeah, that's. I don't. Yeah, I bet that they don't do that with child actors anymore. <laughs> well, I don't know if you've Actually, been uh, in the discourse lately, but I have uh, not seen that documentary yet. I yeah. don't know if I can bring myself to Wait, watch. Which movie? Just or... uh, Quiet on Set. Yeah, the, oh. about all the Nickelodeon stuff. I've oh, read about right. a lot of it, but yeah, yeah, not not so good. Yeah, but this movie, pretty good. Yeah, and it seemed like Minko Hughes was like totally fine with it. He was talking about how it like he understood it was like make believe and pretend and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Amanda, did you like the Hansel and Gretel thing? Because you liked the Peter Pan stuff in the orphanage. I did, I did. Well, for this too, it kind of, I liked the little bits where like we had the sleeping pills that were the breadcrumbs. He made the nod about his the breadcrumbs for his dad to come home when his dad doesn't come home. And then as far as the storyteller, when Wes Craven is talking about the story, he was talking about it being the storyteller. So Wes Craven is the storyteller where he's writing the script and telling the story. But when he's explaining to Heather about how this dark being has come out, is trying to cross over into our world, he says something about how like the storyteller, it's up to the storyteller. And I liked how, again, that just added another level of like layer upon layer. Mm-hmm. So I liked it. Not And also, it also because it's like a classic fairy tale, you got this cute little kid, like nursery rhymes before bed, that tender moment. No, it worked for me. I don't have like a, a connection to Hansel and Gretel like I feel like I do with Peter Pan stories mm-hmm. for some weird, stupid reason. I have no idea. Um, but I liked the storyteller aspect of it because that went because Wes Craven was the storyteller. I don't know. And maybe there are other other things. Well, I guess uh, doesn't the witch? Don't they burn the witch in the fire in that one? Mm-hmm. And that's how they kill so, Freddy. Yeah. So things. I mean, so the kid probably that's why he hid in the 
I don't know. Maybe it's why he hid in the furnace. <laughs> in the in the yeah. oven that has a yeah. secret door on the side yeah. that only an eight year old can crawl And there's through. a snake. That Freddie didn't know about. <laughs> <Yeah. or something. laughs> there's a snake in there. Yeah. There's right. a snake in my booth. There is a snake, and he's not. He doesn't seem very scared of that yeah. snake. No. <laughs> yeah, I would never get into a metal oven where no. there's an open fire. <laughs> that would have been even like just having your face near the wall would have been so. <laughs> it's just so funny that Freddie's like struggling to reach in there. And then, like his go-go gadget arms. Yes. Like, oh, and then he has a go-go gadget. I forgot head. about that. Yeah, he can do all that. He's trying to eat the kid. Oh, yeah, he has like his head in his mouth. Actually. Right. Oh, that's yeah. So funny. I think it's. There's some surprises. There's a lot of like fun, neat elements where yeah. it's just. Eh. Yeah. And compared to the conclusions of a lot of the other movies yes. in the series, this is pretty good actually yeah it's the it's the more grounded one <laughs> well, too, like knowing if you can believe that christopher <laughs> <laughs> and if you think about like how astray some of the other movies were and how much west didn't like them yeah and how like the three that he was behind or the three that heather is in like knowing that those two and like robert england like n- had this he was in the other ones but like the stamp of approval for just like this you know 10 years later like conclusion like you know wrapping it up i think that's just really neat yeah i think that's really neat mm-hmm. i love um that to leave the dream world they like jump into the pool and then they like spill out from the bed i think that's like a cool little transition um and then Heather sees a script with a note inside that says, Heather, thanks for having the guts to play Nancy one more time. At last, Freddie's back where he belongs. Regards, Wes? Regards. You don't have anything more to say. Regards? Like, that's so sterile. She just fought a demon. It's good enough. Regards. Regards. <laughs> Best wishes. <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if that's how he Warmly. signed autographs for people or something. I don't know. Fan. Yeah. I hope she just saved the world. <laughs> Come on. I hope the script found you well. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great summer. And See I do next love year. <laughs> the final shot, like coming down, like backwards out of the hallway. I think yeah. that's cool too. Yep. Yeah. I'm just curious about how later that day, how was it? Like, what's the dinner conversation? <laughs> um, Another fucking everyone's earthquake Everyone's going happened. to prison. <laughs> how could they not? Yeah. <laughs> Well, they still, I mean, the hospital still has to follow up with her and her kid, and there's so much stuff. Yeah. She has to find a new <laughs> nanny. His schizophrenia yeah. is healed. That's yeah. right. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For more on that, visit Dylan's New Nightmare on YouTube. I am making <laughs> a note. I'm definitely, it, yeah. it's only a half hour. Like, it's short and clearly fan made, mm-hmm. but it reminded me of Smile for some reason. Hmm. I don't know. I think it's interesting. Um, they clearly didn't have, like, the rights to anything yeah. either so keep that in mind okay. cool nice awesome. awesome well thanks for uh skipping that cup of coffee and falling asleep and heading down this hellscape <laughs> of a, a nightmare with us this was a lot of fun uh i'm glad i finally watched this movie and i'm delighted that only three of that all three of us hadn't seen it before mm-hmm. yep. that's, that's cool. so wild and yeah. also that allison had seen it like a million times yeah <laughs> this is one of my favorite horror movies like Ever. Cool. And it was on my short list when we first started this podcast. It was one of the movies I was thinking of. Yeah. I can't believe like Freddy Krueger is like the one like slasher. Well, I guess I picked uh, another slasher, but how? Yeah. Why? Don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Throwing it out there. So do you guys have any final like wrap ups, thoughts, feelings, dreams about this movie? (laughs) I wish I had some good dreams. Oddly enough, now I want to go back and just enjoy the, the all the movies in the series for their light comedic touch. <laughs> and I wanted to see Dylan's Nightmare until thinking it's probably really grim and serious. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Okay, yeah. I'll see it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's only about 20 minutes because the last 10 minutes are credits. Are credits. Because of all the people who oh, helped wow. fund it. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, are we ready to read it? Yeah. You, how you feeling? Ready. Ready, Freddy. <laughs> um. <laughs> My grandma used to say that all the time. She'd like uh, play catch with us in the backyard, and she'd go, "Are you ready? Are you Freddy? Go!" And it was always on the third that she'd throw the ball. Anyway, she was just making sure that you weren't Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I just think of the Queen She's song. Terrified, Freddy. Freddy. <laughs> 
crazy like, little I can't things. prove it, but Allison <laughs> might be Freddy Krueger. She's got those long ass arms on her chest. <laughs> are you Freddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Grandma. Are you? So I kind of loved this movie, and I really did not expect to. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with my knee-jerk reaction scores. I usually will write one of those immediately after, like, in my notes. Um, scare meter, two out of five. Not scary. A couple of things that in, are conceptually scary, but um, overall, like, this movie is is light and was kind of, like, fun to watch more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to say seven out of ten. That's I, – I, that's well, that is a C. That is I, – I can – Comparing it to, so I gave Misery an eight, I think, and I think Misery is a is objectively a better movie than this. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think seven out of ten, and it's uh, this might be my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I'm not really sure. Like it, it feels weird to say that since the first one is such a classic. It does things to you, but it's it's weird. Like, yeah, there's a, this movie made me feel things I didn't expect, and that has not been true of most of the stuff that we've watched. <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, I I like yeah, this was a really nice surprise and thank you for picking it. So, I didn't really find this movie scary. I maybe found this movie to be the least scary of all the ones we've watched. Um talking to all of you about it, of course, has been a fantastic time. I would have to give that experience a 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to go with a 7 out of 10 for the movie itself. Um, It is an odd movie, and it's kind of unpolished in a lot of ways. You know, you get the weird long monologue from Wes Anderson. Wes Wes Craven. Oh, my God. You did it. I thought I was going to do it so many times, and I did not once, and you did it. Yes. How incredible would it be if Wes Anderson appeared in this movie? Oh, my God. He should make a a Freddy Krueger movie. That'd be sweet. He'd be so stylish. Hi, guys. I haven't made Bottle Rocket yet, but I'm about to. Oh. um, In the documentary, um, Don't Never Sleep Again, there are amazing claymation Trans, like an opening and transitions for each movie. They're like <gasps> so cool. cool. Oh, yeah. Oh my so God. they're ready for Wes Anderson. Yeah. They're nice. beautiful. Right. That's so cool. <laughs> um, what was your score for the scare rating? You didn't give it one. Oh, uh, do we start with one? Is that the low? You can also yeah. go with zero. Yeah. Do zero. We've done zeros before. Okay. I would give this a zero actually. <laughs> um yeah, it didn't really scare me at all. It f- kind of felt like an 80s, you know, Charmin ad <laughs> to me. Burn. And that's, oh, sorry. That is not to criticize it at all. Right into the furnace. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was so much fun. What does that mean to you? The only Charmin ads I know are like the weird. The bears bear butts, wiping their ass on a tree. Which Jordan oh, hates. No, yeah. No, 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 no. Charmin, don't squeeze the Charmin, the Mr. Whipple in the supermarket ads. Those are, yes. Anybody? That's an older campaign. Right. Oh. Hmm, I'll be Googling this after. Okay. <laughs> I like how we're ending on a toilet paper commercial. Yeah. <laughs> For a movie that we liked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, my scare rating. I am going to give this a two out of five. Ooh. I don't find it that scary, but um, when I watched it in high school, this was actually like a really like influential like uh, movie for me, um, and particularly the scene where the where Julie's getting dragged up the wall that like really scared me when I was in high school. Um, and then my film rating, which truly is just a score of how much I liked it, not the quality. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 because I love this movie. I don't know that the quality really is like a 10 out of 10, but I don't care. I love this movie. So. Hell yeah. Yeah. Defend the things you like. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's funny because when we try to rate these, I go back and see what I rated previous things. I was like, oh, well, now I can't give it this because I gave that that. Oh, I never do that. I know. Don't do it because it doesn't change your mind. Yeah. I don't think this movie was very scary. Um, I'll give it a one just, you know, because Freddy frightened me as a child. Um, I did not, we didn't really talk about the dark Freddy very much, but I 
I wasn't really into the Dark Freddy version with his leather pants or his boots and stuff. I didn't really... And his Halloween USA mask. Uh, yeah, like, I don't just, like his mask. Dark I'm like, Freddy? The, How, uh, the, the new entity of Freddy. Like the new realization oh, of Freddy like, that's supposed to be darker. and He didn't have like the Robert England profile as much. He was just different. He's a little more built. And then his just there's something just a little bit off about his face. He's less <laughs> menacing. Yeah. I thought he was less. I didn't. Yeah, he was less scary to me. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm still going to give it a one. And then for my overall film rating, oh, I had one score. Then he went back to a lower score. And I feel like don't I want to give it a one. <laughs> don't do what? Don't do my original or don't do my new one? Do your original. My original? I'll give it a six and a half and go in the Ooh. middle. I'll go six and a half. Fancy. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. It was a, a good time. I'm glad I picked it. And I'm glad that there were a few of us who hadn't seen it before. There was some... Again, way too much fun. So many fun elements. And yeah, I never thought that I would be picking this movie. <laughs> yeah. So here we are. All right. Well, that's uh, where we are for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you like what you heard today and want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thank you for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. What Scares Us.